went to a meeting with Alexis Johnson's Ivan. I, I simply wanted A, to alert you that this trouble will be up during the day, and B, to see if there are any particular questions you wanted to ask before the matter comes to you. Yes, uh, one, I'd like to know Westmoreland's views thoroughly, and if he's got a cable on, put it on the wire and let me see him. I don't see enough of uh, their attitude to get a feel of it. And well, they've had very little trouble uh, now. So when the Let's, let's watch the Westmoreland uh, messages of any consequence and get them to me. The second thing, uh, uh, I, I would like to know from Rusk if he has any feelers out anywhere. He has a feeler out and no response to it. He talked to the uh, Romanian Hungarian Friday afternoon and said uh, what happened in the South would depend on what the Viet Cong did, but that uh, he could tell the Hungarians there would be nothing in the North for a day or so. I wouldn't object to going a day or two if, uh, there's any money in it. If there, well, if you could use your imagination and get two or three others going, it wouldn't hurt. Uh, if you could get Wilson to do something with somebody, or if you could get the Poles to do something. Do it. I could, if you for could, example, Tommy could call Debrina's attention to this and say that, if, if there's any hope of anybody even using it, we don't want to hear anybody saying, well, we want another pause. But if there's any hope that anybody making any use of this, uh, we'd like to know it without making a commitment. And I, I don't know who uh, who uh, you could get to talk to, but I guess uh, somebody, Wilson, we need to... We need that court of public opinion a little bit, and he always likes to get into it, and yeah. Canada too, and... Uh, and maybe the polls where you'd be in a position uh, 48 hours from now to say to them, uh, now we notified all these folks and we, we then after we waited uh, two and a half days, we told them again that if there's any reason why well, we could go a little longer and we, if there's anybody at work, we'll do it. But if it's just uh, allowing them to mount a new offensive and to murder a people, well, we got to defend ourselves. There's one other reason that uh, may make it useful it's pretty clear that you're going to get the first major recommendation you're going to get on the new RT series next week. It's going to be uh, to go after that iPhone POL. Uh, well, I'm strong for that, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know when to do that when we've got uh, 45 ships uh, yeah. in the harbor there and uh, can't get them unloaded. And this is all being staffed out as to what our own defensive. I want to ask some general that wants me to go into the port, what the hell is going to do when somebody drops a hand grenade or a firecracker on those 45 ships that lined up in that port, been there 45 days and nobody touched them? I talked to a friend of mine this morning just back from out there and he said it's the most disgraceful, unthinkable situation you could believe. He says that you've got to get some port facilities some way and they've got to bring some of these old barges in from Gulf Coast or something to unload them and let them haul them in that way because he said that this is, they, they just can't get the material. He says they're supposed to be building 10 airfields there the size of the Corpus Christi one down here and they got, they can't get any cement, they can't get anything in there, they can't get supplies and said one goddamn little single motor plane drop over and drop a hand grenade and it'd take them six months to get the damn ship out. And he said, if we don't get them unloaded, he said, the people work like hell there. But they just don't have any port facilities, and we've either got to find some new port facilities or we've got to find some new methods, and we haven't done either for 45 days. And I, he's a practical, tough, able operator, and he says, your Mars Knudsen outfit fell down on the job and, and uh, didn't have the personnel, and, and uh, I don't want to get them involved, but sounds to me like it. we need some real industrial expediters out there that are, that are coming in with some imaginative... Yeah, uh, next Norton, just getting back this week, he went out uh, well, about a month ago with the industry's man. He should have an up-to-date account. I don't know if he's a particularly important man. And Vance has been doing practically nothing else but ports. I'll try and get you an up-to-date account of that from me. So, I don't think you ought to quote me to them, but I think you ought to say that you're seeing... Uh, reports here about 
airport clog ins and let's see what the remedies we have and what solutions before we decide whether we're going to bomb anybody or not. I don't want to get the worst end of it. Right. Right. And I don't know whether General thinks uh, he's damned easy to go tackle a teacher, but when he turns around, they tackle him. I don't know what he's going to be prepared to do. Yeah. How he, how's he going to do, defend himself in this one port we got? Then I think I would try to talk to Rusk. Is he there? Yes, he is. I would try to talk to him and get he and Tom in. And your office or go over there, and they all try to think about three or four things that you could do, and let's evaluate whether signaling them and taking 48 hours is worth it or not. And if not, well, then we'll go to Westmoreland. If it is, well, then we'll decide it. And let's uh, talk three or four hours from now. Be back at you uh, at any particular time, more convenient. No, no, no. You just call me, and I may be 30 minutes from here any time, but we'll work on it as soon as you do. All right, sir. And I think that the damn networks are just running people crazy with it every 30 minutes. They yeah. stories that we're not bombing, and the Air Force says they don't know why they're not bombing, and yeah. Washington won't let them bomb. And I just wish that damn bunch of military people keep their mouth shut. Yeah. But have you been hearing uh, the Air Force's mouth? I've seen Air Force announcements out of Saigon is we don't know why we're not bombing. We ought to be bombing. They've, the morning, they've stopped us. Yeah. Yeah. Is Lodge back yet? Uh, no, sir. He's, uh, he was when I last saw him. He's supposed to be back there tomorrow. Oh, okay. well, wait just a second. Let me see if there's anything here. Have you gone over my message to the head of the Philippines? Yeah, I'm not satisfied with it, and I'm, uh, they're having a meeting, uh, Humphrey and Rusk, right now uh, to review the question of what might be asked out there. The question really is whether Humphrey ought to put the, how hard he ought to put it to him orally. Your message doesn't say anything, but Vietnam is very important, and Humphrey will talk to you about it. And uh, the, uh, we had a contingent agreement from Maca Miguel for about 2,200 men in a construction battalion. They have a legislative problem, the exact shape of which is as clear to me as it ought to be. And the question really is whether Humphrey might not simply say to him privately, look, we're going to need fighting men from the Philippines, but I'm not here to break up your inauguration by giving you an ultimatum. But this is the thing that matters most to us. The Philippines, he's got a mess. He's got empty coffers and sugar problems. I think if you discuss Vietnam with uh, Humphrey in any way that he'd be in uh, every column in America in the morning. Yeah. I've cautioned the boy seven times, and uh, this morning every paper down here is full of all the trades he's going to propose and yeah. what all he's going to do. And I think it would be a mistake to try to tell this man that just as he's, uh, I treat him just like I treated Wilson when he came in, that uh, I, don't, I wouldn't be coming out there to tell him that he's got to win our war for us. I'd get him out there and I'd brag on him and say he's the greatest guy in the world. And we've all got interests out there. And then when I got him away, I'd have uh, uh, somebody tell him, uh, let Bill Blair take a letter in and say, now, you told us, uh, the Filipinos told us that uh, you'd come to our rescue after the elections. And uh, here it is. I would love for Humphrey to do this when he learns, but he just cannot learn. He just does not know. I saw Richard Wilson's had a lengthy interview with him today, and two or three more, and he is uh, giving out interviews now that that he is really on top of the world situation because he saw some Japanese newspaper man, and that his image against Bobby Kennedy is not as bad as it, it, they say, and he's very defensive, and he's a fool. I told him if he quit worrying about his own goddamn image and go to worrying about the world a little bit and get these hirelings away from him, while well, we'll take care of his image. Uh, All he has to do is cut a little mustard in the private. That's right. But uh, so I don't think it's wise to have him go out and and make any proposition to anybody about anything. And I think Rusk ought to say to him that uh, we, we haven't reached any conclusions on what they ought to do, that the best thing he ought to do is just say that Vietnam is important to that area of the world, and if we get licked there, we don't know what how they'll stand up. But not, not actually for a proposition. Not a damn thing. When he asks him how many troops we want, say that's a matter you better talk to our ambassador about. I'm not here to mess in your inauguration because 
Norman Cousins along with him, and God knows what come out of it. Yeah. Yeah. But I do think that uh, we ought to have the Paul's boys and the Bobbies and the Teddies and everybody else now that's got any ideas. Let's just have them and let's let's feel them out and let's see if the, the New York Times, who's been the bat daddy of the Paul's, if they've got any suggestions. They don't like it because we haven't announced. Well, if they, if they tell us who the hell's interested in it, we might announce it then. Just tell them. Yeah. Right. If we can get anybody that's interested in it, the Russians are not interested in it. The Russians are not interested in it. Who the hell is that? Well, if they, if they tell us who the hell's interested in it, we might announce it then. Okay. Just tell them. Yeah. Right. If we can get anybody that's interested in it, the Russians are not interested in it. And I, I don't know who the hell the Chinese don't seem to be interested in it. And I know he's not interested in much of a truce. I don't think there's anybody interested in it except uh, uh, Johnny Oaks. <laughs> and he doesn't have any troops. Uh, but I think he might say to him, we've gone two or three days and we're willing to go for two or three months if anybody can show us anybody's interest. But we've contacted everybody. Now, if you all got better sources, if Scotty's got a better source than we have, we'd like to have it. And I would certainly explore it with Gronowski a little bit, let him make some pitch to somebody, and maybe the Canadians uh, let them make a pitch, and just to take care of their Nobel Peace Prize people, and maybe Wilson. Well, if we're going to do that, we'd have to sort of decide now to wait another two or three days to give them another turn around time. And that's what we need to look at the consequences of and how bad that is for Westing. So, so we'll get that sorted out. What does this bombing in North Vietnam, why is that bad on him if you wait for him? Morale, Mr. President. They just scared to death that, uh, that we're not fighting the war hard enough. It's like these Marines that you say that Jesus Christ Washington's trying to have it both ways, fight the war and have a truce, and you can't do it. And uh, you can't. It's at, Bob is absolutely right that whether we do or don't for a week, that's no more, make no more impression than a spoonful of sugar in a bath. I, uh, but they don't feel that way, and it's feeling involved. I'd better get the messages, though, and see what the arguments are, and get them down. And then see what you could do. I don't think we'd necessarily have to wait 48 hours. I think if we got, if we had uh, Gronowski say to the proper people, or if we had, uh, if we saw, said to uh, Wilson, now, uh, can you ask somebody, or maybe the French, uh, you ask anybody if this is going to mean anything, if we delay any longer and get back to us, they'd get back to us. It wouldn't, I'd think, wouldn't you? Well, they could sure do it in two days. I don't think it would one. Okay.